This is a review of some of the basic derivative rules. First is the power rule. The derivative of any polynomial or something that looks like a polynomial, you just subtract one from the exponent and move that exponent to the front. So for example, if I want to take the derivative of x to the 3 halves, I move this 3 halves to the front and turn it into a multiplication, and I subtract 1 from the 3 halves, and it becomes x to the 1 half. Here's another example. I'm going to rewrite this as 2x to the third minus 7x to the negative 4, because negative 4 is just easier to see. So when I take the derivative of this, f prime of x will be 6x squared. The 3 moves to the front and multiplies by the 2. And then minus, well, the negative 4 moves to the front. So it's actually going to be a plus now. 7 times 4, negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28. x to the negative fifth. And you can rewrite that with the x to the fifth in the bottom, but it's not necessary. Product rule. You have two functions that are being multiplied together. You can take the derivative by taking the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So if I take a look at this example, the derivative of the first is 3x squared times the second in its original format plus the derivative of the second, which is 6x minus 8, times the first in its original format. You can multiply it out, but you don't have to. Quotient rule. If you have the derivative of two functions that are divided by each other, you have the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. You may hear this as low d high, low times the derivative of the high one, minus high d low all over low squared, low d high minus high d low over low squared. So you may see it either way. If I take the derivative of this, I'm going to take the derivative of the top, 4x minus 5, times the bottom in its original format. So low d high minus high d low, or the derivative of the bottom, 3x squared times whatever the top was in its original format all over the bottom squared. Again, you do not need to simplify that at all. Chain rule. If you have a function inside of a function, you take the derivative of the outer function, leave the inner function exactly the way it was, then multiply it by the derivative of the inner function. So this is kind of like x to the fifth minus 2x on the inside of some function x to the sixth. Now, I, using x is probably not a great idea, but it's some function to the sixth power. So if I take the derivative of this, I'm going to do the exponent power rule. So 6 times whatever that inside function is, leaving that the same, to the fifth power. So that's the first part. That's taking the derivative of that outer function and leaving the inner part the same. Then I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of the inside, which is 5x to the fourth minus 2. Again, you do not have to simplify it. Additional derivatives to memorize. Sine's derivative is cosine. Cosine's derivative is negative sine. Tangent's derivative is secant squared. Cosecant's derivative is negative cosecant cotangent. Secant's derivative is secant tangent. Cotangent's derivative is negative cosecant squared. E to the x's derivative is e to the x, and natural log's derivative is 1 over x. And again, all of these things could have chain rules or product rules or anything like that, but you have to memorize these derivatives. 
So we're going to do some mixed practice. First one, if I take the derivative, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. The derivative of 3 sine x would be 3 cosine x. Nothing really other than just something memorized and a power rule in that one. Number two, if I take the derivative of this, this is going to be a product rule. So the derivative of the first is 6 times the second part in its original state plus the derivative of the second one, which is 2x minus 4 over x. So the derivative of natural log is 1 over x times 6x plus 5, which was just the first part in its original state. You do not have to simplify that. Number three, you could treat this in a couple different ways. You can treat it like a quotient rule. So the derivative of the top is 0 times the bottom. 0 times anything is 0, so it doesn't matter. Minus the derivative of the bottom, which is just negative 6x times the top. Notice that minus a negative is going to turn into a plus all over the bottom squared. So I realize what I have. It's just 6x over the bottom squared. Or I could rewrite this as 4 minus 3x squared to the negative 1 and treat it like a chain rule. So I could do it that way. So f prime of x is negative 1 times 4 minus 3x to the negative 2, or sorry, 3x squared. four minus three x squared to the negative two. And then I have a chain rule, so I have to take the derivative of the inside, which is going to be negative six x. And notice that if I simplify the minus and negative, multiply those together, it becomes positive. And then I can move this negative two power to the bottom. These two things are equivalent. Number four, this is definitely something that has to be a product rule, unless I, or quotient rule, until I rearrange it to be a product rule. But that's probably not even beneficial. So derivative of the top would be 6x squared times the bottom in its original state minus the derivative of the bottom, which is cosine x times the top in its original state all over the bottom squared. We'll leave that like that. Number five is a chain rule. Four cosine of 2x to the third. So that's just taking the derivative of the outer shell. Oh no, come back. Times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Notice the inside stays the same. And then there's a third layer to this. So the outer layer was the fourth power. The middle layer is the cosine. The inner layer is the 2x. So the derivative of 2x is just 2. So if I simplify this, it would be negative 8 cosine of 2x to the third times sine of 2x. Notice I just add 2. I just moved this negative to the front and 4 times 2. Number 6, let y equals uv be the product of two functions u and v. So we want y prime of 2. So that's going to be u prime of 2 times v of 2 plus v prime of 2 times u of 2. So it's derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times first. So I'm just going to make some substitutions where everything goes. So this is 3, this is negative 4, this is 1, this is 2. So it's negative 4 plus 6, which is 2. Number seven, they give us some information about the function f, so we're going to find g prime of four. So g prime of x, in this case, this is going to be a product rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of squared x, which is, remember that the squared x is x to the one half. So that's one half x to the negative one half. Just taking the derivative of that using the power rule times f of x 
So this is going to be a product rule. So derivative first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Now I'm just going to make some substitutions. So g prime of 4 equals 1 half 4 to the negative 1 half times f of 4, which we know is 3, plus f prime of 4, which we know is negative 5, times the square root of 4, which we know is 2. So I'm going to simplify 4 to the 1 half, or 4 to the negative 1 half, so that's just 1 half. So 1 half times 1 half times 3 is 3 fourths, and negative 5 times 2 is 10, so 3 fourths minus 10 is negative 9 and 1 fourth, which is negative 37 fourths. So that's part A. On the AP test, you can actually just leave it as 3 fourths minus 10 if you don't have a calculator. Part B, quotient rule. So g prime of x in this case would be derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1 times the top all over the bottom squared. So if I'm going to substitute in 4, I have f prime of 4, which is negative 5, times 4 for x, so I'm just going to replace that with negative 20, minus f of 4, so minus 3, all over 4 squared. So it's negative 23 over 16. Lastly, both of the following fail to be differentiable at x equals 0, but not for the same reason. Explain what's happening. So if I take the derivative, I have 4 fifths x to the negative 1 fifth, and I have negative 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds. So this is the same thing as 4 over 5 x to the 1 fifth. Sorry, this should be a y prime. This is negative 1 over 3 x to the 2 thirds. So what I end up having is I have 4 over 5 x to the 1 fifth for part A. This is going to end up being a cusp of some kind because there is only one spot where the derivative is uh, 0 or the derivative doesn't exist because 0 is in the bottom. But notice the derivative is negative all of these spots. This is a graph of the derivative. And then the derivative is positive whenever I plug in a positive value of x. So that's going to be a cusp. Um, and I'm sorry, this is the graph of the original function. So the graph of the derivative would be something where I have negative values, and then it goes off to infinity, and then positive values over here. This is the graph of y prime. Whereas this y prime is going to have always positive values in the denominator because I have this squared. So if I graph the original function, what I'm going to end up with is 3 minus a cubed root. So it's going to end up being something cubed root looks like this. So it's going to be something that looks something like that, where I have a vertical tangent line at 0. And my derivative graph is going to be always negative, having a vertical tangent line at 0. Sorry, really bad at drawing. But at 0, and then it ends up leveling off as I go a little bit further along. And actually, 3 minus that, I didn't graph that very well. That should actually be up 3. But the derivative is basically what it's supposed to be.